I was told that um, this uh, brick I've got on my butt is uh, for uh, the camera only, so I need this so you can hear me. But without it, because I'm such a, such a loud cow, can you hear me anyway? Yes. yes. You can? Yes. Every word? <laughs> Daniel, um, um, I never told him what I was going to talk about, so in the lift, he very nervously, with very sweaty palms, said, uh, incidentally, what are you going to talk about? And I said, doing unnatural things with raw vegetables. <laughs> and he said, you can talk about anything except for things that are religious or that are politically sensitive. So I'm not going to talk about raw vegetables or doing unnatural things with it. But, um, you know, um, but I'm here, um, I've been uh, euphemistically uh, referred to as a filmmaker, um, which I'm not really, I'm just a film dabbler. Um, and um, and I'll, I'll try and make this relevant for you and not just for film buffs. This microphone is a bit, it's a bit like me, yeah, on and off. Yeah. <laughs> Good? Can you hear me? Yeah. Cameraman? It's on camera? Good. <clears throat> so, um, do you know what one of the questions I get asked mo mo most often, if, if you have seen my films or commercials, uh, you'll have to be local to do that. Um, and uh, well, the most frequent question I get is, um, how do you choose your actors? Because I use nobodies um, that uh, thankfully later become somebodies and, uh, and they seem to win awards. Um, for their acting, and they're fresh. They're 16. Sharif Amani when I first got her, and Mahesh, uh, this Indian boy from Penang, Gujarati, uh, nobody, and he um, he played this deaf and mute, and he was incredible. I don't play with the button, la brother. <laughs> this one better. So I get asked that question: How do you choose your actors? And the truth is, the truth is, I haven't the faintest idea. But when I went to judge uh, for a film festival in Greece, it's called Thessaloniki. Um, I think I was the token um, Asian um, from the East, um, so, uh, because Fred Ruth was there, you know, he produced uh, Godfather, um, Apocalypse Now and Lost in Translation. And there was uh, Yirzi Menzel, who is now about 70, but he, when he was 28, he won the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. Baka. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, I didn't start till I was 40. So he, he was there as chairman of the jury. There was a poet from Greece whose work I'd read before was incredible. And there was this uh, filmmaker from Argentina who just got some awards in Cannes. And there was token slanty from Asia. How's China, they say to you, you know? <laughs> and uh, there I was. So, you know, it came to a part where we had to judge best actress, right? And the rest of us, um, little ones compared to Fred Roos and Yirzi Menzel, this um, Czechoslovakian man who kept on falling asleep because he was bored by the proceedings. You know, we were talking about that actress really internalized her, the character. And the other actress, she could project it. And the third one, you know, it was purely method. It was so, so, so uh, solvable. You could see it. You know, she's, she's such a professional, like Meryl Streep. And Yirzi Menzel was like this. And then when we finished, he said, have you finished yet? And he's very tall. And he, you know, he banged the table. When he speaks, everyone listens because he's Yirzi Menzel. Even Fred Roos, you know, pees in his pants when Yirzi Menzel speaks. He says, if you have finished, when you choose an actor, you judge him based on one thing and one thing only. And we go, wow, this fellow got the secret to the universe of film. <laughs> So we were waiting with baited men. He says, you look for charisma. And I'm like, so simple, meh. Charisma. And he says, I said, we can't be that simple, Yurzi. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. You actually question Yurzi Menzel. And then I said, um, yeah, it can't be that simple. And he says, uh, who do you like from the United States? And I said, Jack Nicholson. He says, does he have charisma? I said, I think the fellow P also come out charisma. <laughs> and then he said, who do you like from the East? I said, Ken Watanabe, Toshiro Mifune, the late one. And he said, do they have charisma? I'm going, do they have charisma? 
he says, who do you like elsewhere? And I says, well, I like Gong Li, I like Shah Rukh Khan, Shah Rukh Khan, P2 buckets of charisma, the flag got charisma. Cannot act, cannot sing, look a bit like Bangla worker. But, <laughs> but he's got charisma. You know, so I'm, 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 I'm beginning to think, yeah, maybe he's right. And then he said things like, you know, Jack Nicholson, four Oscars for acting. Meryl Streep, internalized project, you know. Two Oscars, 15 nominations, only two Oscars. One, no charisma. Why? No charisma, he said to me. So I'm going, okay, I shall apply this. I was going to look for an actress, Sharifa Amani. Was, I thought, you know, I'd use her too often. Some people in my blog say, eh, you tak ada orang lain ke? Say Sharifa Amani je. <laughs> so I decided, okay, you know, let's look for somebody else for Mu'alaf. I was about to meet Mu'alaf. So I came back and Sharifa Amani was fresh from getting into trouble with the press. Because she went up for an award and she said, you know, I sound really stupid when I speak in Malay. Which means my Malay is really bad, but we have people in the country that think, so stupid, I understand Malay, I understand. Therefore, Malay is stupid, she's saying, you know. <laughs> How dare she is. <laughs> but of course, she's saying my Malay is very bad, lah, and that she sounds stupid if she spoke Malay. But people attacked her because they can't speak very good English. So, you know, and of course, you know, it's not just the Malay papers. Also, some idiot minister also started to attack her. How can she say like this? She must apologize us. <laughs> and I advised her not to apologize, but the mother said, you know, it's better for her career if you... So they apologized on, in the brain. Of course, they got attacked some more. Now, she was fresh from that, okay? So, and uh, I went to Leah's wedding, her older sister, and there were these three sisters, uh, three sisters who were going to make a speech. The youngest one, Sharpa Ariana, who was in Moktain, she was in, and she went up on stage, and she was very sweet, and, you know, I love you, my sister, you know, what would I do without you at home? And, very moving. There were ministers and there were, you know, dignitaries because the parents are very well connected in the audience. Big film star, all got producer. And uh, so next, Sarifa Alesha, who's very, very cynical. You have never met a 15-year-old that cynical before in your life. And she's like, she's not impressed with anything. And then Sharifa Amani, right? So she very quietly went on stage with pulling her gown and she stood, she's small, she's a midget. I don't know as no tits, but she's very attractive. She, she went on stage and then she held this microphone, right? And the hall was very quiet. And she said, You guys have a lot of guts giving me a microphone again, she said. <laughs> I bet you ministers are thinking, What the hell is she going to say now? And she's so small. And I looked and I went, I can't help it. She's, the girl's got charisma, right? So when I take her in, you know, when I, you know, when Sepet won awards in France and in Tokyo, I, you know, I get the nama, the fellow never get. Well, it's her charisma given to her by God. Now, the lesson I learned from that is, I think that I, don't, I can't speak for, for, for other filmmakers in the country, but I can only speak for myself as a screenplay writer of sorts and a filmmaker dabbler, is that um, what you have to do, I mean, if you look for charisma, what it says is you don't know anything. How am I going to choose an actor or actress? I just choose somebody who was born with this thing. You know, I just choose them and you know, I can't take credit for it. And then I find, oh, so I have to step back as a film director and just let people be wonderful. If they're wonderful, take them. If, they suit, if the character that you've written, which is pure imagination, doesn't suit them, you change it to suit them because they are God's creations and they are blessed with this thing. And who are you? You've just written some semi-fictional character. And then I learned to step back some more. Is it 15 minutes yet? Because my husband always says, you are talk nonsense, I don't know the time or so. He's an ape from Telo answers, so what does he know? What time is it now? <coughs> have I run out my 15 minutes? Do I have it? I don't care, I'm going to talk, I've got the microphone. So, <laughs> So, and then I step back further and then I realize that people who write beautiful things, the people who make beautiful films, really step back and became nobody. You know, they just step back and observe. I love haiku. Kobayashi Isa wrote something called, um, that went like this, Don't worry spiders, I clean house casually. When I was 20, I thought, what the fella talk about spider, big deal, so famous, what is this? But later you realize, hang on, he actually cared for the spiders. Somebody big cares for somebody very small. I will take care of somebody small. I will take care of you because you're smaller and you're fragile. I will take care of you. And the whole world had this attitude. If Josh... <laughs> if Daphne <laughs> <laughs> had that same attitude, nobody would get killed. What, you know, uh, well, it's, it's a bit simplistic, but there it is. If some people in power here were to think, oh, no, you're smaller and you're weaker, my job is to take care of you. Then, 
It might not be a bad place to do it. It is simplistic, but I think there's some truth in that. So all he did was observe. Spider, very fragile, me, very big. I'm cleaning house. I'm going, poor spider, you know. So I'll just step aside. I'll clean around you. Don't worry, I'll clean around you. So he just observed, and he produced this classic poem. And then I read Pablo Neruda. Um, Nobel laureate uh, poem on Ode to Things, Ode to the Cat, Ode to the Fork, Ode to Stockings. And all he does is steps back and observes them. And he comes out with these wonderful things in October of Past. And, and screenplay writers, and Akira Kurosawa, and Yasujiro Ozu, and Yamada Yoji, and all these people, suddenly it dawned on me. They didn't think, you know, I'm somebody, therefore I have control, I'm the director. You listen to me. You know, do you know who I am? When you're like that, if I'm Yasmin Aman and I'm like that, and I'm creating something and it's to be my mark, my wisdom, my ego, my sculpture, this film, the biggest this thing can be is me. And I'm an ant. And I'm a drop in the ocean of wisdom. Right? This is an Islamic thing. You, whatever you know, it's just a drop in the ocean. And then I remember, oh my God, I got to empty myself. And the Quran says in Ayat Kursi, it says, you know, all knowledge comes from God. And in the Tao Te Ching, my second favorite book of all time, and the Zen Buddhists, they basically say, empty yourself. And even Buddha says, you know, learn to let go. It is a key to happiness. So you got to let go. Whatever you create, even Steve Jobs and whoever who has ever created anything great, basically forgot themselves and said, I'm not going to, I'm just going to observe what is needed. I'm going to observe um, God's creations or things in the Tao and, uh, and just be servant to it. And then suddenly you become bigger. Do you know what I mean? The cloud is just some evaporated water floating around, but the cloud doesn't try to be something else. The cloud doesn't say, I shall be the Marlon Brando of clouds. You know, it doesn't say, I'm going to be the Moshi Diane of clouds. It doesn't say such thing. It's just a cloud. And then wherever it goes, it will go to exactly the right place. It will rain at exactly the right moment and feed exactly the right things. And then it will dirty some places at exactly the right time. And it evaporates again. It is, it's more than a cloud by not trying to be anything other than a cloud. I don't know if that's relevant to you. And, uh, and I think when you write, well, when I write, I shouldn't be so presumptuous. When I write, I try to be nothing. Now I understand what Lao Tzu said when he said, empty yourself. Be an empty bowl. It's more promising than a full one. A full bowl cannot go anywhere. It's just, you know, you can't put any more water into it. So be an empty bowl. Be an observer. So sometimes in finance, when they have my sassy appreciasi, of films, it's not really sassy, it's sassy mengutuk really, you know. And, uh, somebody once said to me, you know, uh, you don't know how to make films, you know. I put to you that you don't know how to make film. <laughs> what do you have to say to that? And my response was, you know, you're right. You know, you're sepet, what is this? TV drama, nothing more than TV drama. What do you have to say to that? I said, you know, I think you're right. But, you know, there's some TV dramas that are better than movies, so I'm okay, I'm happy, I just produce what I think feel is right. So I th all I do is I observe, you know. And I've been asked to come up here, you know, on this thing that my husband watches, TED.com. I'm, uh, I'm too busy. I'm too busy watching Yamada Yoji and playing computer games. And I know he says, and I said to him, like, somebody called TEDx.com on you to speak. Hey, bugger, so must speak. Must speak. No, that one is so popular now. I said, what? What is it? <laughs> So here I am, I don't know anything about filmmaking, and that's not humility. I don't know anything about advertising, I don't know anything about screenplay writing. All I do is come in and try to empty myself, which is so hard. Our prophet once said to some people who just came back from defending the religion, you know, they've broken arms, no legs, bleeding, and they said, you know, we've been through now the toughest battle ever. What do you have to say about that? And the prophet said, no, 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 this is not your toughest battle. Your toughest battle is in here. And that is to remove as much arrogance as you can, remove self-importance, step back, be nobody, so that you can become be a part of something much, much bigger. And with that, I hope it's 15 minutes. Can someone tell me?